My name is Jeff McLaughlin. I'm the Network Architect for Juniper Corporate IT. And in this video, we'll be discussing Juniper IT's WAN Refresh Project. In 2009, Juniper decided to re-architect its legacy wide area network. At that time, we had about 10,000 users and 100 sites spanning the globe, 90% of which were served by IPsec VPN over the internet. About 10% were on a single provider managed Layer 3 MPLS VPN. We had some challenges with this old architecture. First of all, it was very hard to implement quality of service on IPsec, especially because we had a lot of disparate internet service providers. We had poor voice and video performance in remote sites as a result. We had too many providers. It was very difficult to manage. And we had decentralization of services such as the internet, which made policy enforcement difficult. It was also hard for us to add new features like IPv6 or multicast, and that was particularly a problem on the Layer 3 MPLS VPN. If you need to add any new features to it, your provider has to support that feature, and you have to do it the way the provider wants. And if you have multiple providers, we didn't in that case, but we wanted to move to a multiple provider architecture. If you have multiple providers, it can be very difficult to coordinate adding those features between the providers. One of the first things we did in re-architecting our wide area network was to define a five-tier logical architecture model. Each one of our 100 sites was placed into one of these five tiers, and each tier had different requirements for availability and other features. So you can see here on this slide, tiers zero through four. Zero are large data centers, either internal or cloud. Tier 1 are business critical sites like large campuses, Sunnyvale and Bangalore, for example. And tiers 2, 3, and 4 are smaller sites. We recommend that any enterprise re-architecting their WAN take this step if they haven't done it already. Before I talk about our new model for the wide area network, I'm going to talk about the traditional MPLS model. In the traditional model, we have a service provider network here in the middle and we have multiple customers with multiple sites connected to that service provider network. Here we can see customer A and B, both of which have two sites. Now in the service provider network, the routers which are not connected to the customers are called P routers or provider routers, whereas the routers that are connected to the customers are called PE routers or provider edge routers. The customer routers that connect to the service provider network are called CE, or customer edge routers, and the routers that are entirely internal to the customer networks are simply called C routers, or customer routers. And you can see here in the left uh, of the service provider network, there's a PE router that's connected to two different customers. That's entirely normal in a provider network. MPLS runs within the provider network. In other words, it runs only on the routers that have a P in their name, either the P's or the PE routers. It does not run in the customer networks. Typically, customers peer with the service provider using eBGP, although it could be some other routing protocol, and they exchange routes with the service provider. In other words, the service provider learns the routes that the customers have. Juniper's new WAN architecture uses the same model as the service provider MPLS model, except we control all of the devices, the P devices, the PE devices, the CE and C devices. We control everything. This means that we're running our own MPLS network internal to Juniper, and because of that, we have greater control over our WAN. Now, Juniper doesn't have all of those P routers in the middle of their network like a service provider does, but our provider routers live in special communications hubs that we call Juniper POPs or JPOPs. At large Tier 0 or Tier 1 sites, we actually drop a PE router, a provider edge router, in instead of a CE router. What this enables us to do is extend MPLS all the way into Tier 0 or Tier 1 sites, which allows us to create multiple VRFs for traffic separation and run that all the way into the sites. This is different, you'll remember, from the traditional MPLS model where a site only has a CE device and MPLS is not extended all the way in. Now at our Tier 2 and Tier 3 sites, which are smaller, 
we don't need that functionality and at those sites we still use a CE router on site. Because we have a global WAN, we can't actually afford to have dedicated circuits between all of our sites. So we're running our MPLS on top of VPLS from two different service providers. Thus, the Juniper Service Provider Network, or JSPN, is an overlay on top of a dual ISP VPLS, which is an underlay. Now, we actually don't care that it's VPLS. It could be any Layer 2 service. It just happens to be that that is the most efficient way for us to get connectivity to all of our sites. Now I mentioned in the previous slide that we have several communications hubs that we call Juniper Pops or JPOPs. This slide shows how they are laid out globally. We have two in each region, Americas, EMEA, and APAC, plus one more in Sydney, Australia. Now each of these Pops is interconnected via two separate global VPLS clouds from two different providers. Now, even though we picked VPLS as the service to interconnect our different sites, I'd like to point out that what really matters to us is that we have layer two connectivity between the sites. We're not very particular about what kind of technology is actually used. It just has to be layer two. So you can think of these two VPLS clouds as basically big switches. It's as though each pop is on a single layer two segment globally on each of those provider networks. If we zoom in on the JPOPs in one region, we can see that in addition to the dual global VPLS clouds, we have dual regional VPLS clouds. And it's these regional VPLS clouds that are used to interconnect our different sites. Now within a region, traffic between the sites does not need to transit the JPOPs. Sites can talk directly to one another over the regional VPLS clouds but traffic between regions does have to transit the Juniper Pops and the global VPLS clouds. In addition, we've centralized our internet access at the JPOPs. This allows us to deploy a security stack which is centralized instead of having distributed internet access at the different sites. Well, here at Juniper IT, we are committed to using Juniper products in our network, of course. And uh, we really do believe that they're the best for a solution like the one we've designed. Juniper's routers were designed with MPLS in mind from the ground up from, uh, from day one, and they're very powerful and fast routers. They work very well for this sort of architecture. Some of the products that we're using uh, in this deployment, uh, for routing we have MX480s, 240s, and MX80s in our POPs, as well as at some sites as PE or CE devices. We have EX4500s and 4200s as switches in the POPs, and we're also using EX2200s as out-of-band management switches in the POPs. For security, we have various kinds of SRXs in the POPs, as well as the MAG6611 for SSL, VPN, and UAC. We didn't talk about those functions in this video, but they are located in the JPOP. And then for management, we're using Juno Space, STRM, and to manage the wireless devices in the branches, we have a WLM 1200. Now, when doing a major overhaul like this, it is, of course, important to test out your ideas in a lab. And traditionally, we've built physical labs where we've actually racked and installed the devices that we were going to use in the real-world deployment. And that works very well. Uh, we did do that in this case. It allowed us to fully test the actual hardware that we were going to use. But we have a great alternative here at Juniper, and that is called Junosphere. Junosphere is a fully virtual lab. It enables you to spin up virtual routers and connect them on the fly, as well as to do traffic generation. And this allowed us to do some very thorough testing of the protocol design that we had come up with for our new WAN. It's a great alternative. It's much faster and much cheaper than physical hardware. And at the time that we simulated this network in Junosphere, MX routers were not supported, but they are now. So in fact, you can even test platform-specific features in Junosphere as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to Juniper's internal WAN refresh. If you'd like some more details or more information about the project, you can contact your Juniper account team. 
Thank you for listening.